for those that are unaware, Ra- Radar Radio was an o- was an online radio station that was very popular with you know people in the scene, <clears throat> whether they were hipsters, whether they were guys involved in the UK hip hop and grime scene and whatever it may be, and fashionistas and stuff started to get involved in it too. Um, this came during the time when I think <clears throat> NTS kind of was popping up a bit, wasn't it? Right, NTS was kind of like jumping up and becoming. NTS was kind of becoming more prominent. It's always been something that people have been interested in, but a lot of people were, were egging to have shows on it, me included. Um, I did ask a while back, right, when I was pretty still involved in the Dalston scene and I kind of didn't get a yes or a no. And judging by the people on their lineup, I thought I was better than most of them anyway. So I was like, you know what, I'm not begging for this shit. I don't, I don't really care. So I kind of left it, <clears throat> however, I didn't ask again. But a lot of people like having a show on there. It's very well regarded, I think, within the industry. Um, people just, I think it's a really, it's probably a good look too for your CV. Everyone wants that picture of them in that little hut thing that they have in, in the Dawson Square thing, wherever, wherever, what they, is it Gillette Square? Gillette Square? I think it's Gillette Square. Um, <coughs> it's a good look. So it's good, right? So it's a weird kind of resurgence of internet radio coming back in, coming back in vogue. Probably, in, probably has it some sort of relation to the whole podcasting rise and whatever it may be. But it got really popular. So the other alternatives kind of sprung up, and radar radio, radar radio is one of the popular ones, right? Especially amongst the kind of young, a younger demographic. NTS is probably more mature and maybe a little bit more grown up, uh, music wise. And then radar radio is probably more like grime, bass, and all that sort of shit, right? Hip hop. So that's the kind of direction that they're going in. And they also had like loads of um, uh, kind of like topical type shows on there, like. Um, morning radio type shit like breakfast club type stuff right like call in stuff right so it was quite popular with everybody um and but the interesting part of the story was that the founder of radio radio is the son of uh is the son of the chairman or chairman of what or the owner of newcastle mike ashley who's very you know controversial figure um he's also the co-founder of sports direct and um this kid kind of like you know took all of his you know, and you know, his endless pots of money and decided to build an internet radio station, which I'm sure, you know, in the beginning probably didn't make that much money. It was probably more of a time suck. It probably waste drained more of his money than it did make him anything. But he decided to do it and cause he wanted to be part of the culture and part of the conversation and make this radio station and give people opportunities to have shows. So I I always thought it was a very interesting and noble thing that he did, right? Because someone usually people in his position just enjoy their riches and run off into the sunset, right? He didn't need he doesn't need to come back um and kind of fail at something they doesn't need to fail at. he doesn't need to uh get dirty you know get his hands on these dirty setting up a radio station he doesn't need that that hassle really he can just like you know stay on his like quote-unquote physical island and just enjoy himself but he's had to take that risk and in the beginning you'd, you'd hear some murmurs of some people you know uh this rich kid has got the station blah blah blah, blah. but for the most part he gave people from the ends an opportunity no one really said anything but I always found it interesting. This, this is me just from the outside looking in, right? I always found it, I always found it very interesting how they were going to handle the friction between hipsters, right? Especially on Red Arena, they had a lot. They, they, they had a lot of people from like the Dawson Superstore crowd, right? Um, the kind of people from like the LGBT, LBGTQ kind of scene in london right people from like vogue fabrics had some shows on it people from like, the pussy palace people who have very um who have a very set who no, no no people who have a very different view of the world than the people that they had on the station like the kind of guys from the grime scene and i always thought it'd be interesting how they handled that friction i thought it was probably part of their selling point that they were able to have like road guys on the same station as you know drag queens and stuff i i thought that was cool but knowing london the way i know london and knowing ends people the way I know ends people they're a lot more backwards or a lot more conservative than you'd hope than you had like to think so I, I just thought it was I just didn't know how they made it work and then uh, unfortunately it transpires that they actually weren't making it work and a couple of girls wrote these long uh, essays and articles on tumblr kind of detailing their experience of sexual abuse and harassment working in radar radio and most of it came because of that friction right between these road guys um, who'd, who'd, who'd never seen a girl turn up to a radio station wearing a fishnet dress. You can wear whatever you want, but imagine, like, they're not uh, used, they, they they can't handle having that energy in a room and not want to touch, which is fucking ab- abhorrent, don't get me wrong, but you just, just can't handle it. And then you've got people 
on the other side who are used to being in a room where everyone's inclusive and it's welcome all and doesn't matter what your background is your interest your sexual orientation and then suddenly now you're being judged right about by other people because of who you are so that kind of friction was never going to work and unfortunately it didn't work allegations popped up and radio stations shut but mostly it shut because people kind of pulled out when they once they read the story everyone kept doing this same rehearsed tweet which was so fucking cringy as well again people on social media with the activism is just annoying isn't it if you're not going to go on it because you don't like their how they treat how some people are treating your fellow um radio hosts or colleagues just don't just don't go quietly resign sending your emails to the station but everyone had this same sort of like cookie cutter um due to the due to the current um what's that due to the findings or whatever they found out i'm gonna be pulling my show off the air like the same rehearsed shit right as if like people already already were sitting there thinking oh my god no not you you know like whatever anyway it was a very bad thing um you feel sorry for the people that were involved that did get sexually abused and the kind of station kind of went on pause pending an internal investigation. Now, I didn't think that they were going to go under. I thought maybe they were going to take a pause. They were going to get rid of the, about all the rotten eggs that kind of fucks up the station. And then they were going to invite everyone back in again and kind of go through some kind of awareness program thing. That kind of the Starbucks guy. I, I did. I, I'm not a fan of it, but what kind of what the, the Starbucks in Philadelphia did when those two black guys got arrested. And they kind of went through this unconscious bias training, which was a bit you know a bit weird um but i thought they'll radio 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 would at least do that right get rid of the bad eggs invite everyone back on again but have a meeting where everyone can kind of you know know um via no uncertain terms that this kind of behavior is not going to be accepted on our radio station jeremy we won't stand for a zero tolerance policy and kind of allow themselves to kind of build themselves back up back up again and maybe under a new under a new uh mantle uh, behind a new vision, maybe actual real inclusivity and not a pretend inclusivity where you just get people in a room together and call it inclusivity or diversity when they don't even speak to each other, right? Or they don't have the same world view or they don't have anything in common. Like, it, that's not the way you do it. Um, so I thought that would happen, but it seems like it didn't. And judging by this article that I'm going to pop up on the screen now, they are done for. So um, as this article from uh, Resident Advisor points out, Radar Radio shuts down with 4 million debt and a 500,000 fi 500, closing cost. I don't know what closing cost means. Um, the London station, which closed amid controversy this year, paid out an estimated 270,000 in redundancies. Bloody hell. Radar Radio, the East London station that recently closed for an accusation of sexual harassment and toxic working environment, has published a f its financial earnings accounts for 2017. In its annual report filed to Company House, a UK-based company reports losses of just over 1.3 million, up from um, 826,000 the previous year. It owes a debt of 4 million, mostly to Mash Holdings Limited, which owned by retail billionaire Mike Ashley, father of Radar Radio director Oli Ashley. The report confirms that Radar has the financial support of its parent company for at least the next 12 months. The accounts also revealed that more than 500,000 closing costs with an estimated 270,000 in redundancies plus 230,000 fees related to the decision to cease broadcasting. 16 people were left without a job after Radar Radio went off air on the 8 April 16, 2018. Following public statements that Radio, Radar's working environment from Pussy Palace, uh, Ash... Uh, Ashtart Ash Al Hura and others. Subsequently, many key DJs cut ties with the station. Um, Reservoir had reached out to Olis actually for the comment. Bloody hell, man. I didn't know, again, I didn't know they were going to go under like that. I thought, honestly, that they were going to just like clean shop, um, kind of, you know, get rid of all the bad guys, like I said, and kind of go in the new direction. But I guess it was that bad of a toxic environment. And, you know, that's the unfortunate side of these sexual abuse or um, sexual harassment allegations within a workplace, especially when it's like an independent um, company, especially when it's some, a company that's under 15 people. I'm assuming the HR processes aren't really set up in a good way to kind of really... Because I remember actually did, a girl mentioned that in one of her essays, like, you know, she reported it and felt like nothing got done, but it's really hard to kind of get it done in a, in a, in a company that is maybe only 15 strong, um, full-time employees, Maybe the HR person's actually a receptionist who also doubles up as an office manager. It's, does, it's, not, it's not a kind of a, a specialized job. And I don't know, loads of things like that happen. And it's also sad too for everyone that's involved because these allegations not only hurt the people who are getting abused, 
not only hurt the people who do do the abuse in because reputation's been damaged, but also the people that have that are just working a nine to five running the station. You know, they all lose out on a job in April. Do you know what I mean? During the summer months, you know, you might have planned holidays to go to, all this sort of stuff, and you just kind of lose your lost your job because some dickheads in your station decided to take it upon themselves to start touching up girls in there. Do you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. <clears throat> Again, but maybe the wider question that needs to be spoken about that maybe isn't probably, there's probably not the right time or space to speak about is that friction. <clears throat> like I mentioned before, you know, with how picky German clubs are with who they let into their club. There is this idea that there is a friction, right? There is a friction between who you let into your bar. Like I've been sometimes out in clubs in London or in Dawson or something in Hackney where it's been like, a, oh, I won't be letting the guy be like, oh, it's a lesbian night tonight. <clears throat> now, um, I have no no problems at all being in a nightclub full of people that happen to be lesbian or gay. I've been into I've been to you know, I'm I'm into techno, I'm into the Berlin clubbing scene. By its very nature, it's you know, it it, it I'm into like, you know, the seventies disco, Loft New York, you know, Studio fifty four. By that very dish by that very by that admission, <clears throat> it mean that I'm okay with being in an environment that, you know, welcomes everyone and anyone that's where that music kind of sprung up from that community you can't be you can't be homophobic and into disco it just doesn't happen sorry you just this just don't happen but i remember going to clubs and being rejected and being told hey so that lesbian night um it's not uh we're not gonna let you in and i didn't i, I was all right with it um <clears throat> even though i know I'm, I'm gonna be well behaved i think there's an understanding that sometimes putting some people in in, in a room with other people won't necessarily work the way you want it to work, right? <clears throat> Diversity, just through pure select, just through pure pure people inside the rooms, doesn't really work that way. Um, it should be a, a diversity of like kind of um, mindsets, right? Of competency, of understanding, life experiences that might help, but you know it's hard to judge that from the, from the kind of you know um, from just an overall image. But I think that's something that has to be kind of questioned or kind of understood. Because that's maybe why NTS works really well because you know you can. This isn't a slight, this isn't a cuss on them, but you can kind of, you, you could, you could kind of, they're all kind of interchangeable, people that present on there, they you know, there's not a real kind of like differences in taste or appearance even sometimes, which is bad to say, but it is what it is. Um, they all kind of have the same kind of general interest. So it would be very unlikely that you'll hear a case of someone at NTS radio being sexually abused or being taken advantage of because, you know, someone took it upon themselves uh, because that he or she turned up in a scantily clad outfit, right? Because they haven't used to seeing that kind of thing, and it's something that's just blowing their mind. Or because the girl's talking about sucking dick in the morning on radio, or being very open about their sex life, that somehow these guys are, th are thinking it's an opportunity, or that means that they're ready and that they want it, right? There is a friction behind that that isn't really addressed, and I think that's what radio radio suffered from. That kind of inclusivity, that welcoming people from different backgrounds kind of fucked them over in the long run because some people just, just weren't ready um, to be confronted with those type of people when they when they were in front of them, in, in front of them, like right in front of them in their face when they're doing a radio set. Again, it's really sad for everyone working there. Everyone really sad for people that lost their radio jobs, people that lost their gigs as well. Like, you know what I mean, um, annoying. But again, I'm, I'm a little bit dubious of these, of these radio shows anyway, and especially with podcasting and things like SoundCloud and YouTube. You could do your own. You don't, you don't need to have their platform, but I guess for the most part, if you're using their platform, you want to have their audience so that their audience can follow you and you could say, say, you could kind of siphon off some of their audience and build up your own and hopefully lead other opportunities. But I think for all those that have been fired or for all those that have been let go, for all those that have kind of stepped away due to all those allegations, like now is the time to kind of take your future in your own hands and do your own thing, man. Start your own show. SoundCloud, MixCloud, these things exist. Um, things like Anchor on your phone like upload your own sets like beats in Re beats in space radio guy has his own kind of like selfish little station that he runs in new york that he kind of invites his guests that he kind of likes who he vibes with and he gets them to do a little mix on online do you know i mean that kind of thing and he hosts it all online for a jeremy you know I for a flipping server like stuff like that i think is super important to do especially especially nowadays like i don't think there's any point in paying subs and going on this radio station unless it's something really big like a bbc one extra or something i mean when you have access to like you know a whole population but something as niche as an nts or radar radio you could probably do without it even a rinse fm like i don't think i can't remember the last time i actually listened to any of those shows it could be my own kind of bitterness right 
but I think for the most part, I don't listen to them. I might listen to a, I might listen to a mix, but I don't listen to a radio show from NT. Like I'm, I'm actually I don't even I don't think I've even listened to an NTS mix in my life for real. Um, and just you know, just there's so many other things to be listened to at the moment. So you could do your own show. You could put it up as a podcast. You could upload it onto SoundCloud yourself. Like you don't need to go on a platform. 